Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to resize the screen as most of my dimensions will be in the XY view. So I'm just going to left click on this line to start a dimension, left click on the opposing line, and you can see my dimension lines on the screen. Now if I hold down shift key, I can move the dimension outside of the dimension lines. If I right click on a dimension, I can then look at the nominals, descriptions and tolerances. We have a description here, 55 millimeters between line and line. Just want to edit that to say something more applicable. 55 millimeters length and apply the changes. Okay, now we notice here we've got a couple of tick boxes. This one will show the geometric function, so I can remove parallelism and reapply it. I can also remove the measured dimension by unticking. Okay, so here we have the nominal of 55 millimeters. This has been um, estimated as the nearest 0.1 to the actual measured size. So if I change that to something else, 56, it's now outside of tolerance and it's shown as red on the screen. We also got the options to edit tolerances. This can be absolute or relative. And both boxes will affect the neighboring boxes. So I've just set this up to be out of spec. Which also to dimension the, the width. It's going to show the identifier, give it a name. Okay, if we look at angular dimensions, always click on the longest feature first, but you notice graphically I can choose any of the quadrants. Okay, I'm going to mention a diameter, so I left click the circle twice, and left click again to drop the dimension. So I'm going to get the slot width. So software will default to the center of the circles. If I right click and choose max and max, it will give me a dimension over the circles. That's the outside. Also going to dimension a true position. So I have a double left click then a right click to bring up the menu. I'll right click on here, I have some options, so we can check the nominal position. Again, these are estimates. I can unshow the Z because that's a zero value, it's not applicable. We can also choose maximum metal condition. So we need to type in the smallest hole size. So here the tolerance will be starting at 5.99. You can see we have a tolerance of 250 microns. Plus the 3 microns gives us a total tolerance of 253 microns. What I'm going to do here is add some datum labels. So I'm going to call the plain datum A. Double left click and a right click to show the menu. I'm just going to drop this in one of the other Z views. I'm going to make the reference circle datum B. Then a double left click and a right click. Choose datum. And finally, I'll choose the constructed line as datum C. and a double left click and a right click to choose datum. So now I want to display these datums within this window, so I choose it here, add A, choose B, add C, add and OK. So you can see now the full geometric framework on the screen. It's also dimension between circles. If I do a right click at this stage, I can choose between horizontal or vertical dimensions. to plot a PCD, so I need to construct a circle with the spanner icon, select each circle in turn, choose a type of construction, you see it being plotted as we go, finish construction, 
and you can see that there's an offset in the X and the Y. You can also check concentricity between these two circles once I've placed the diameter. Just going to call this the PCD for the help on the report. Okay, let's check concentricity between the centre hole and the constructed circle. So I just select the two circles and left click and it will default to a concentricity value. Also go and add the datum label. Okay, I'm going to dimension this cone back to the plane. So cone first to plane will give me an angular dimension. But notice we have a run out here rather than a squareness. So to achieve squareness I need to construct a line through the centre of the cone. So construct, select the cone twice. There's now a line running through the middle of the cone. So same angle, different geometric tolerance. Okay, what I want to do now is dimension the, the depth of the cone. So we just do the same but in a different order. So it would be plane first, then cone. This will give me the theoretical end point. Hold down the shift key. There we go. I also want to know what diameter the cone would make if it met the surface. So I'll do a circle construct between the plane and the cone. Then I can dimension this construct a circle to get this dimension.